Hello, everyone. We'll start the third session of RSS now. Uh, this will again be five spotlight talks followed by a question and answer period. The first spotlight talk will be Planning with State Abstractions for Non-Markovian State uh, Task Specifications by Yun Tian Oh, Roma Patel, Tao Nguyen, Bai Chan Huang, Ellie Palak, and Stephanie Telix, and it'll be presented by Yun Tian Oh. Hi, I'm Yun Sono, a postdoc at Brown University, and I'm working in Stefan's group. And in this paper, the robot can understand the language command and can plan for the task very efficiently using state abstraction. And usually, human interacts with others through the language, and usually, the language is a very great tool to interact with the robot. And first, we need to understand the properties of the language. So usually, the language command includes the temporal expression. So for example, there are commands like these, and we can specify the order of the task using the temporal expression like before or until, and it is translated into the linear temporal logic expression. And also, the language commands can include some spatial abstraction in different levels. So for example, in this building, there are some floors, and each floor consists of many rooms, and rooms consist of many cells, and landmark occupies only one cell. And if we use this kind of abstraction, we can improve the planning efficiency dramatically. However, using this abstraction for the task with a different level of spatial abstraction is not trivial. So instead, we propose a novel approach that can handle the situation. So our algorithm can understand the language model as a linear temporal logic and decomposes the task within an abstraction hierarchy to plan efficiently at higher levels. And we also propose the system for the drone in the mixed reality. So we use the Pi drone, and we can see the mixed the virtual environment through the glasses, and there are two floors and nine rooms on each floor, and there are three landmarks. And we alter the language command, and it is translated to the text, and then it is translated to the LTL spe task specification using our net neural network model. And then we propose the planner, that APMDP, which can handle the Bougie automaton and environment MDP and abstraction hierarchy. And in the next video, we show, we'll show what happens. So in this video, we click the button using the gesture and give the command that is avoid landmark 2 until go, you have been to the blue room. So you can see the robot understands the language command, and then it goes to the blue room like that. And we also give another language command, that is to go to the landmark three, and then goes to the landmark, uh, goes to the yellow room. And it also works well. However, you can see the state space of this problem is quite limited, and it's because of the stability of the drone. So we choose another drone, which is more stable in outdoor space, and the drone flies on the brown campus. So here, this is the brown campus, and the red one is the path that robot moves. And we start at the, uh, in the front of the green. And here's the green corresponds to the landmark one, and the blue bear corresponds to the landmark two. And we give a natural language command that avoid landmark one until you have been to the second landmark. And then it flies to the blue bear through the sidewalk to avoid the green. And after it reaches to the blue bear, we give another language command that goes to the landmark three. And then this video shows our, our algorithm is how powerful in the real environment and the huge environment. So please visit our poster and please see what happens in here. Thank you. The second spotlight will be Despot Alpha, online Palm Depot planning with large state and observation spaces by Neha Garg, David Su, and Wee Sun Lee. And it will be presented by Neha Garg. Hi, I'm Neha from National University of Singapore, and today I will be talking about Despot Alpha. 
Real world robots often have to do planning under uncertainty, and partially observable Markov decision processes, that is, form DPs, provide a principal way of doing so. However, when observation space is large, which is often the case with sensors like LiDAR, vision, and touch, state of the art form DP solvers do not perform well. To see the reason why, we look at how these solvers work. A general way of planning under uncertainty is to search in a belief tree. Each node represents a belief, the probability distribution over states. The agent starts with the initial belief P0, executes different actions, gets different observations, and chooses the action that maximizes the value of the belief. This is done at every step for online planning. We can see that the size of this tree increases exponentially with depth, making search in this tree impractical. Therefore, state-of-the-art PomDP solvers construct a sparse tree. For example, the spot solver represents belief by a set of particles, and for each particle, sample scenarios by determinizing the outcome of actions using a sequence of random numbers. A determinized and sparse tree captures uncertainty approximately and also allows near-optimal policy computation. However, when observation space is large, small number of scenarios do not capture the uncertainty well, as all the scenarios generate different observations. Because of this, there is only one particle to represent the belief after the first action. This makes the solver over-optimistic, and it is not able to take information-gathering actions. This issue has also been highlighted for another widely used solver, POMCP. To deal with this issue, instead of sampling scenarios, we sample fixed number of observations after each action. Thus, each node gets k particles, and solver doesn't become over-optimistic. However, this again makes the size of the tree exponential in terms of the number of sampled observations. To gain computational efficiency, we use alpha vectors. It is well known that the value function of a POMDP can be approximated arbitrarily well by a convex piecewise linear function of belief, where each linear function is called an alpha vector. An alpha vector is associated with a conditional plan, and for each state S uh, captures the value of executing that plan starting from state S. We can notice that all the sibling belief nodes, that is, nodes which differ only in their last observation, have same set of particles which differ only in their weights. By making certain assumptions, which hold well in practice, we show that we can use alpha vectors to interpolate lower bounds among these sibling belief nodes. Thus, we can use the alpha vector computed by expanding one belief node to compute the lower bounds of uh, sibling belief nodes by just doing an inner product between the weights and the alpha vectors. This interpolation provides massive computation gain and is the key idea behind Despot Alpha. We further parallelize Despot Alpha using CPU and GPU parallelization ideas provided in hip Despot to parallelize Despot. Since each node contains key particles, we are able to leverage GPU parallelization better. We test Despot Alpha and hip Despot Alpha on various PomDB problems with large observation spaces, including a complex real-world problem of car driving among pedestrians. Results show that we are able to outperform uh, Despot and hip Despot, and also scale up to problems with large action space and large state space, along with large observation space. Thank you. To more about, oh, come to a poster. The next spotlight will be dense FISNET, learning dense physical object representations via multi-step dynamic interactions by Dendra Zhu, Jiajun Wu, Andy Zhang, Josh Tenenbaum, and Sharon Song, and will be presented by Andy Zhang. Hi, everyone. It's my pleasure to present this work on behalf of Zheng Jia, who could not make it today due to last minute visa reasons. Today, I'll talk about a method that uses manipulation to better understand the physical world. Intelligent manipulation benefits, uh, requires understanding object materials and physical properties. Can robots learn about these prop properties through interactions just like humans? It turns out to be a challenging problem. In static environments, most physical properties cannot be directly inferred from appearance cues alone. 
even with quasi-static interactions like pushing, these properties can be difficult to observe without accurate force torque sensing. Also, different physical properties may only be revealed under specific types of interactions. In this work, we're interested in enabling robots to autonomously learn about the physical properties of various objects using vision. The system learns meaningful object-centric properties that reflect physical, property, uh, physical properties by first, observing object behaviors under different forms of dynamic manipulation, such as sliding and colliding, and then building a predictive model from these observations. This leads to more accurate and efficient manipulation in downstream tasks. We designed two types of dynamic interactions to accentuate the physical properties of objects, sliding and collision. For sliding, the robot executes a push at a high speed so that the object can slide after the push. For collisions, the robot grasps an auxiliary cylinder and lets it roll down the ramp to collide with an object. Here are the details of our model. Our model takes as input the current state, modeled as a depth image, and an action vector. The action vector is fed through an encoding network that generates a set of convolutional kernels. Simultaneously, the depth is passed into another network that extracts visual signals and outputs a visual representation. The two representations are combined with cross-convolution to generate a state action representation, which is then fed into a motion predictor network to predict the change in state, represented by pixel-wise optical flow. To aggregate the information from past interactions, the multi-step aggregator learns to integrate the visual representation with the object representation after the last interaction. We execute a series of experiments to explore whether the learned representations encode meaningful information about the physical object properties and whether they are useful for downstream tasks. We first analyze whether the learned representations can be used to distinguish object properties. In this experiment, the robot interacts with three objects with different physical properties, but the same appearance. We can see that after several interactions, the representation features gradually separate themselves from each other in the embedding space. We then trained a linear classifier to decode physical properties on an annotated data set. Over the course of multiple interactions, the error decreases quickly, which means that our model gradually accumulates knowledge of object physics. We also test the learned representation on downstream control tasks. In this experiment, our task is to slide an unknown object with a selected push direction and speed so that the object will slide to the target position. We do this task by using the learned predictive model. Here's a comparison between our model and the forward model, pushing the same cube. Our model achieves better performance after several interactions. Our models can generalize quite well to new scenarios. For example, it can generalize to scenes with more objects than those in training. Additionally, we can integrate the decoded physical properties into a physics engine for planning and control in new tasks. Here, the goal of the new task is to slide one cube into another so that after the collision, the second cube reaches a target position. With more accurate physical properties, our model achieves better performance on a new task. For more details, please check out our poster. Thank you. The fourth spotlight will be local Koopman operators for data-driven control of robotic systems by Yorgos Mamakoukas, Maria Castano, Yaobo Tan, and Todd Murphy, presented by Yorgos. Hi, I'm Jorgos Mamakoukas from Northwest University, and I will talk about local Kuman operators for data-driven control of robotic systems. This is joint work with uh, Michigan State University. The focus of this talk is to introduce a calculus-based rationale for obtaining linear representations of known nonlinear dynamics for the purposes of fast, high-performance control. Note that this approach requires having an existing model of dynamics and cannot be used for systems that are completely unknown. Let me start by introducing Kuhlman operators that are infinite dimensional operators that enable global linear embedding for nonlinear for, for non systems. They do so by evolving nonlinear functions of the state S, um, which are called observables, psi of S. They can also account for actuation by augmenting the observable functions with control terms. Although these operators are typically infinite dimensional and prohibit any practical implementation, certain classes of systems do admit a finite dimensional linear operator. Here is an example. 
by making x1 squared a third variable, you get a linear representation of the nonlinear system without any loss of accuracy. Expressing nonlinear systems in a linear way is promising because it enables improved control performance, given that the linear representation makes it straightforward to calculate the global optimum uh, using controllers such as LQR for the original nonlinear dynamics. Unfortunately, finite dimensional Kuhlman operators exist for a very limited class of systems. Yet, they can still be approximated with measurements using a least square solution. The challenge in this approximation is using the observable psi of s such that they allow the recovery of the system states and also yield a good linear representation of the nonlinear dynamics. However, to the best of our knowledge, there has not been a systematic way of choosing the observable functions. Rather, choices are arbitrary, relying on neural networks, trial and error, or system-specific tools. In this work, however, we choose observables using structural knowledge of the dynamics. Assuming you can update the states with measurements during experiments, we're only interested in updating a finite linear, uh, linear representation of the system for a limited time window, rather than globally. Using a Taylor series expansion, a function can be approximated using its higher order derivatives, which we argue make for the most relevant observable functions. In matrix form, this looks as follows with its subsequent derivative being approximated to a lesser degree. Note that the last observable is not propagated at all using this analytical solution. This is why we use data-driven methods to obtain such a matrix, populate these entries, and improve the model. Again, note that this approach, except for parameter identification, cannot be used for systems that are entirely unknown because it does require an existing model of dynamics. We test our method on a tail actuated fist developed at Michigan State University where the controls are the amplitude, frequency, and bias of the tail oscillations. The, due to the cyclic nature of the tail movements, the dynamics can be approximated with an average model which still, as you see, contains highly nonlinear terms. First in simulation, we train a Kuhlman operator uh, using as observables the states, the terms that appear in the dynamics, and their first order derivatives. We then use the model to develop LQR control and track a figure eight pattern. Here, I'm showing the profiles of the body frame forward and rotational velocities, as well as the planar trajectory generated by the applied control. The control, um, as you see in this figure, helps track the figure eight quite well, despite uh, being calculated from the linear finite uh, data-driven presentation, despite using LQR gains that are calculated once. Next, we train a Kuhlman operator using experimental data and compare it against backstepping on tracking a line, an arc, and a circle. Again, despite using fixed LQR gains throughout the experiment, Kuhlman LQR compares well to an algorithm that has been manually tuned to do well on the average model dynamics. We're currently extending our work to include comparisons to other controllers and other choices of observables, as well as tester method in the presence of fluid disturbance. I'll be happy to talk to you uh, during the poster session. And thank you for your attention. The last spotlight will be Monte Carlo policy synthesis and POMDPs with quantitative and qualitative objectives. Uh, this is by Redwan Nawaz, Swarat Chowdhury, and Lydia Kavr Kavraki. And unfortunately, the first author wasn't able to make it uh, for visa reasons, and so a video will be played of the spotlight. Hello, everyone. My name is Abdullah al Redwan Nawaz, and I will present my work with Swarat Chowdhury and Lydia Kavraki. We regret that none of us can be here today. Our colleague Zach Kingston will present our poster. In this paper, we develop a novel sampling-based policy synthesis approach for autonomous robots in uncertain environments. We consider motion planning under uncertainty with quantitative and qualitative objectives. Classically, the problem of motion planning under uncertainty is modeled as a palm dp with quantitative objectives, where the goal is to maximize a given reward function. However, there are many problems where we must also consider safety and task achievement. We are taking a close look at safety and reachability objectives in addition to the optimality objective of palm dps. Here you can see a fetch robot in an office environment. We want the fetch to reach the table and the pick up the glass with a short pad, but also stay safe and avoid the unknown random obstacles around the office, like the block and the plant. We formulate the problem as a palm dp with both safety and reachability criteria, that is qualitative objectives, and the optimally objectives, that is quantitative objectives. Earlier research focuses on palm dps with either reachability or safety objectives. 
Recently, our group proposed a policy synthesis approach for the safe reachability settings. The previous method took a symbolic model checking approach and suffered from scalability challenges. The algorithm proposed in this work is based on Monte Carlo sampling and uses statistical model checking to ensure that qualitative objectives are satisfied with high confidence. The use of a statistical model checker enables our approach to scale to large problems. Canonically, the PAM TV planning framework is comprised of four building blocks the state estimator, the planner, the controller, and the perception module. In this work, we add an additional functional block, the statistical model checker. Our statistical model checker simulates a candidate action from the planner using hypothesis testing to infer whether the simulation provides statistical evidence for the satisfaction or violation of the safe reachability objective. Our proposed algorithm POSMC constructs valid policies for PAM TPs under quantitative and qualitative objectives. The algorithm is based on Monte Carlo tree search, which constructs a search tree of histories by simulating state transitions and observation from a black box simulator. Given the robot's current belief, POSMC uses the generated search tree to estimate the reward of a candidate action as well as its probability of success. POSMC is guaranteed to converge to a policy that satisfied qualitative requirements as well as quantitative requirements. Our paper presents theoretical results that ensure an asymptotic speed of convergence for POSMCs and bound the estimation errors introduced by the algorithm. Our experiments demonstrate that our algorithm POSMC performs well on large-scale PAM DPs. For instance, consider the earlier office domain when the grid size is 14 times 4 with 7 obstacles. We have more than 1 billion belief states in problem domain. While our previous symbolic method fails in these settings, our POSMC constructs a valid policy in under 30 minutes. We validated our policy on a simulated fetch robot in the office environment shown before. For the explanation of the video, please come to the interactive session. In conclusion, our algorithm utilizes sampling-based synthesis for solving large-scale palm DPs with qualitative and quantitative objectives. Our proposed algorithm opens up a range of new opportunities for complex robot motion planning under uncertainty. Great, now let's have all the speakers come to the stage. And for the last presentation, uh, we will have uh, Zachary Kingston, who will be uh, answering questions for that last presentation. OK, are there any questions for the speakers? Uh, hi, my question's for Yunsen. Um, so I was wondering uh, how you constructed the state and temporal abstractions and how were you accepting your uh, natural language inputs? Um, so was it any natural language input that was valid or was it from a restricted grammar? And was the state abstraction learned or was that uh, like handcrafted? Uh, actually, state abstraction is handcrafted now, but we are planning to learn the state abstraction. And for the language now, the language is quite limited, and we can use the word like landmark, flow, or room, and we manually uh, no, and we have a function to map that that la keyword and then grounds the real world. But we also tr try to learn that language. Thank you very much. I also have a question for the the first part. Uh, in your examples, you only have one constraint at a time. Can they handle multiple constraints uh, in the uh, time, same time? Uh, what is the constraints here? Like, do this before that or avoid this thing. Can they have multiple constraints working at the same time? Um, yeah, yeah. Because um, if we can represent the language command as a linear temporal logic, then we can do we can plan for any of that linear temporal logic expression. So we can use both several until before or something like that. Okay, thanks. Hi, uh, I have a question for the FizNets group, the third group. Um, 
how, how do you, could you explain more a little bit about action selection? Specifically, do you model for observability and do you take actions that are information seeking? We don't take actions that are explicitly information seeking. So our exploration policy is random, but with a few heuristics to maximize diversity. Thank you. Hi, so it's, this is for the last speaker about the qualitative and quantitative. So uh, you mentioned that you spend a lot of time to solve the, the problem that you have shown in the last slide, the navigation problem. So what is the computational bottleneck in the online PONDP that makes it take so much time? Um, so for larger state spaces, as we start getting up to state spaces that have around you know, a billion states or so, at that point you just have to have more particles represented for the belief that then you have to do these rollouts through the Monte Carlo tree search. And just doing that for every particle is where most of the computational time comes from. That's true, but um, okay. So you, you so we uh, you got a lot of uh, online pandu planners that can reach real time performance on large scale problems. Mm -hmm. And but looks like uh, for this work, um, there seems to be extra complexity because you check for the qualitative things. Is it that part uh, taking most of the time? Uh, yeah, so adding the safe reachability objectives, adding these Boolean objectives that need to be satisfied with relatively tight probability thresholds um, adds a lot of time to the uh, planning process. If you want more details, I'd recommend actually emailing the author. No. Oh, okay, thanks. question for the speaker on the linear approximation or linear models. So uh, you said that uh, there are only a few examples or I mean, a limited number of cases where you can do this technique. So do you have a necessary condition, sufficient condition in order to achieve the goal, this goal? Uh, did you consider also change of coordinates without embedding the system in a higher dimensional one or using feedback in order to transform it uh, into a linear form? That's a great question. So. Um, there is a limited class of systems that do allow a perfect linear presentation, but our approach is not just applied to a limited class of systems. Uh, with regard to um, changing of coordinates, that's a, a reasonable uh, thing to try. Many times though, even if you do try to change coordinates, you still won't be able to get a perfect linear presentation of the system. Some st states might become linear, but other dynamics might not. Uh, with respect to feedback, we've actually, uh, uh, submitted some recent work where we compare how, uh, we look at how feedback anonymization is actually related to this linear embedding of nonlinear systems. Uh, and I'd be happy to discuss this further in detail at the poster session. Uh, so I have a question for the second speaker. Uh, you mentioned that, that your approach makes some like some assumptions uh, in order to, for the, the approximation to, to hold. Uh, what are those assumptions and are there situations in the real world where you would expect those assumptions to be broken? Oh, so the main uh, assumption that we make is uh, because uh, we are applying the alpha vectors to the sample particles instead of the whole state space. So uh, we have to make sure that the probabilities sum up to one and for that we have to introduce a uh, dummy observation which kind of holds, uh, which kind of represents all the unsampled observation and we um, uh, uh, we interpolate the probabilities so that the probability of that dummy observation is minimized which kind of uh, alternates the true, uh, true value function but uh, it holds well in experiment and I think it's uh, not a very uh, strong assumption. Okay, and, and one more question for, for Andy, actually. Uh, so once you have learned the model, how do you use it to, uh, to accomplish the tasks? Mm -hmm. So we use the forward model, and then we do a grid search on the parameter space for actions, and then that's how we do the, we optimize for the task objective that way. Okay, any last questions? Okay, let's thank the speakers one more time. Um, so the next uh, session, there will be a keynote, which will be introduced uh, by Antonio. <laughs>